Hello and welcome. My name is Grace and this is my channel. All right, so I'm I'm rusty. This is what it is and I'm just going to dive right in. As you can see, I've um hopped onto the hashtag tradwitch tag um by uh started by uh one of my favorite favorite uh, YouTubers, um, even though she just returned to YouTube, but uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, one of my favorite um, people in general, practitioners in general, Namqua. All right, and I'll I'll link to her channel below with the original video. By now, though, let's be honest, if you're watching my video, you have seen hers and everyone else's. I'm a, it took me a little while to get to it. Um, but here I am. All right. So, um, I'm just going to list the uh, 10 questions and try to give you uh, some answers. All right what kind of craft do you practice and then there's uh, and then um she provided us with some prompts right like you know um folk magic traditional witchcraft wicca modern witchcraft ceremonial magic eclectic occultism etc 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 i practice <laughs> folk magic uh it's no secret i practice folk magic I practice folk, folk magic and see this we're going to jump around a little bit because I'm not going to do the questions in order because in order to explain what I practice um, I'm going to have to jump to number three. I practice Italian folk magic. I am um, uh, of Italian descent. Both my parents immigrated from Italy and um, I'm also the author of my book which I don't have with me to show you Italian folk magic, Ruth's Kitchen Witchery. My practice is uh, Italian folk magic, which folk magic, by its very nature, has um, Catholic components in it for my culture, Christian components for other people's cultures. And I also practice stregoneria, which is the Italian word for plant witchcraft, sorcery, which has nothing at all to do with saints and anything remotely um, Christian. But sometimes it does. But just to to give you an idea, there's the saint magic, and then there's the other stuff. All right. What paradigm, faith, or philosophy informs your craft? Um, being uh, Italian folk magic is also it has that um, Catholic component for sure. It also has. Uh, it, it's also. Um, very rooted in the land, uh, the land you come from, the land you live on, um, the land where you live. Um, there's there's spirits. Um, it's very animistic. Um, I was raised in a very animistic environment, in a very animistic um, culture, uh, without it being called anything. Just like I was raised in a culture. Um, steeped in tradition and customs and magical a magical world view of uh, with, with with the folk magic and the witchcraft and the superstitions and all this stuff but we didn't call it anything it's just it just it was just the things that we did or the things we do like we say in italian you know it translated roughly from the dialect um that i was raised with uh raised, raised speaking uh the things that we the things we do so when you hear this, when people, when you hear other people say the things we do, um, I'm the one that first brought that to the internet. <laughs> I've been on here so long. Anyway, let me, let me carry on. All right. Now, in terms of paradigm of craft, um, this is where you can't really, you can't, once you're a practitioner, uh, once you're a magical practitioner, I know that in my practice, I can't divorce my magical practice, 
from any kind of spiritual practice. And I can't divorce my magical practice from... Uh, my magical practice also becomes informed by whatever profession you practice. So someone who, let's say, has a profession um, where, you know, maybe they're, they're a math professor or something like that. Math will figure in their magical practice. In mine, um, because I'm a healthcare professional, it's not that healthcare... Uh, factors in my magical practice is that my magical practice is informed by an evidence-based practice, meaning that everything I do magically, uh, just by by virtue of what I do uh, as a professional, how I've been how was how I've been professionally trained. Um, that bleeds into my magical practice. So I, w I not only um, practice magic, I then um, analyze it and I evaluate the results. And, um, and then I, I, I figure out, okay, well, this worked. This I'm going to keep. This, di this didn't work. We're going to try something else next time. And I do tend to build upon what works. So if, you know, when you, when you get to know me a little bit, you might think, well, Jesus, the, yeah, you, you're, you know, you're, you're reaching into the same bag of tricks all the time. Yeah, because they work. So I will tend to stick to evidence-based. If it worked, I will use it again and again and again and again. And I can take, um, for instance, um, a magical formula for lack of a better word, that worked, let's say, for um, one topic, one subject, one concern, and apply it to a completely different concern to see if it if it works. And so evidence-based, I don't know, that probably sounds like whatever, but that's my practice. My, my paradigm is evidence-based. I will go back over and over to what works, and make it work or apply it to a new situation or a new need, you know, a different need. All right, lighting is doing something strange, but it's what it is. What culture is your practice rooted in? Okay, so I just finished telling you that um, it's Italian folk magic for the most part. Right, but you know, people evolve. But also, my practice is also rooted in Slavic witchcraft um, because of where um, my people are from. Um, I'm actually quite fortunate. Um, my my father is from. It was he's he's uh, he's no longer living. But my father immigrated from central Italy. I was raised by my aunt and uncle, and my uncle was from southern Italy. My dad's family was from southern Italy, but they had located to central Italy when he was born. Excuse me. And my mother uh, was from northern Italy, uh, the northernmost part of Italy, north, northeast? Yeah. Northeast, so um, with a very strong um, Slavic um, oh my God. English people, English. I just need the English words with with a strong Slavic flavor. Okay, so my mom, um, my mom referred to herself as Slavic. My mom was born in Yugoslavia, but. Anyways, you don't need a you don't need a lesson in my genealogy. Just know that my um, my practice is rooted in both my Italian and Slavic culture. All right, how long have you been practicing, and how did it all start? Okay, me, I'm not gonna be one of those people that says, "Oh, I've been practicing since I was born," because you know I used to see fairies and stuff like that. All children are magical until we until we relieve them of their magic by being shitty adults and telling them that shit's not real and stuff like that. So let's take that off the table right away because 
those of us that are having this conversation, of course, we remember, we're, we're, we were the kids that remember, or we're the adults that remember that we were magical as children. Because we probably, we probably saved some of that. But I'm going to tell you something. One thing I did notice is, uh, and this is like going a little bit off topic, but not quite. I'm not a therapist. I'm a healthcare professional. It's a completely different set of skills. But I can tell you that from my personal experience, a child who's raised, uh, a, a child who grows up, who, who experiences trauma is more likely to grow up to be a witch than someone who hasn't grown up with trauma. And so how long have I been practicing? Well, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, instead of going to the whole, oh, when I was a kid and no, no. 1986, I have been practicing intentionally. I have been practicing a magical practice or I started, initiated a magical practice in 1986. I had already been reading cards since I was six years old. So divination, so I'm not, but I don't consider divination actual magical practice because an actual magical practice is when I decided that, you know what, I am going to have, I'm going to try to take control over my environment. I'm going to try to um, make things go my way for change, right? So that would be 1986. And that would be, I, I don't know how many years ago that was. 37 years ago? No, that doesn't even add up. 1986. <laughs> okay, 30 something years ago. All right. Um, I remember what year because I have some resources here that I, I got at that time. Okay. All right. Um, oh, okay. What books or resources did you first start out with and would you recommend them to others today? Okay. So I'm going to start with, so the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to show you is, um, this is, this is my book of saints or this is my saint kit. Um, over the course of the years, it has it has expanded, and now it's back to its original form. I can show you this part of it. So if you are um, someone who wants to practice saint magic, I suggest you just get these um, these cards of of the saints that you want to become acquainted with, and you start with this. I started with praying novenas, and then I found out, then I left, you know, then I found out that uh, I could leave that behind and and just develop a relationship with these spirits. Okay, the other so the first magic book is not. Um, it was 1986, and someone I want to say it was someone I had gone to get a reading from who I, I'm pretty sure it was one of those newspaper psychics I had gone to get a tarot reading from. Um, I don't even think I ever did a, how did I, like a, one of those tags where, you know, your tarot journey and whatever. I, I started reading Italian playing cards uh, when I was six years old because that's what we did. The grown-ups are doing it, why not? I wanted to learn too. I was always very into what the adults were doing because I was I was the youngest of the cousins being raised by the oldest of the aunts and uncles. So there we go. And then I got interested in tarot after I went for my first tarot reading. And and then I would pay for tarot readings to observe other tarot readers read. So, you know, there was no internet. There were no books books back then they were boring to me and there weren't that many and i had some but i didn't i couldn't learn it from a book i learned by observing others all right i went on a tangent let's come back to this tag okay the first book i ever bought on magic is this one creative visualization bear in mind it's the it's the mid 80s it's 1986 everything is couched in new age language 
this book is as new age as it gets this book I, I, re I still recommend it I recommend it to this day it is still in print this is my original copy I have uh, whenever I go to a, a secondhand bookstore if I see one I pick it up to give as a gift to someone this is it this is it this is the book that taught me how to create the world around me this is the book that taught me um, how to do magic and the word magic I don't think is in this book once so creative visualization um, I'm going to show some other books that I have here on the side here with this so the same kind of this same kind of person that introduced me to this one introduced me to you can heal your life by Louise Hay this is another book that is uh, very new age uh, this is a classic oh my god she started her own publishing company um, that now turns out all kinds of garbage but back in the day she was just Louise Hay this was her first book and um, this lady knows a lot about new this this lady she's she's passed away so I'll speak of her in the past tense but this lady knew a lot about magic just like this lady Shakti Gawain Louise Hay uh, if you're just starting out, if if you're here because you watch me for tarot content, and you and you're just starting out and you want to dip your toe in magic, but um, it's just so hard to just pick these two books up. You can get them pretty cheap. You could probably find them secondhand really easily. These I I recommend 100%. Um, so this was the 80s and then um, the next books I'm going to show you so there's another thing too and I think it was Namqua that mentioned this um, a lot of the books that inform my practice are not in English um, they're they're in they're in a, they're they're books that were written in a, you know that are written in Italian um, I'm going to show you the ones that are English language. So I started out with these. Then one day I went to a metaphysical bookshop, and this is this is a um, this is the original one I had. This is Magic and Witchcraft Revised Edition, Catherine Paulson. Paper book, paperback on magic. Um, would I? I'll, I'll answer the question. Would I recommend? Like, I'll, I'll talk about these. And it's just, you know, it's this kind of book here. It's, look, everything you needed to know about magic in a little, in a little mass market paperback. And um, I loved this book because it was um, much sexier than this one. Anyway. Then one day, this is not the original copy that I borrowed from the library because that would have been stealing. Um, but at the public library, I found Sibylique. And I had first seen Sibylique on TV when I, li when I lived in Europe with my mom. I think we were living in Belgium at the time and we were visiting, um, we were visiting relatives and they were watching, they were watching some TV talk show or TV talk show slash variety show and Sybil Leak was on with her uh, Jack Daw and I fell in love with her. I wanted to be her when I grew up. So this is The Complete Art of Witchcraft by Sybil Leak. When I, the, the original copy I, I borrowed from the library was a paperback and it was still in print when I borrowed it from the library because I was able to purchase it I want to say at a metaphysical bookstore all right that was my dog groaning my dog's already bored with what I'm talking about it's 20 minutes and my well it's okay I'm, I'm just going to share some of these things um another book and this is one of those books I found I don't know maybe at a at a yard sale or something but um, I was totally obsessed with this book is Magic White and Black by Franz Hartman MD 
So, love it. Well, I love it because it's nostalgic and anyway, this, I don't think this is still in print. I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't even look the next two books. I bought it at the Italian bookstore. These are not the original copies I had. The original copies I had were falling apart and um, they're, they're on my shelf. They're not on my shelf. They're in a box um, in my library. Uh, I have since replaced them with newer copies. Uh, one of them is Ernesto de Martino's Su de Magia. I read it in the original Italian when I read it. Um, this is available in English, and if I remember, I will write down in the description box the title of this book in English. Um, this one is available in an English translation. This one is um, a reprinting of a book um, I had from the 80s that I bought at the Italian bookstore on St. Lawrence Boulevard in Montreal. Or was it the music? I think it was Ital Melodia. I'm not sure. No, it was a Libreria Italiana that I bought it at on, uh, on St. Lawrence Boulevard in Montreal. Those of you watching that are from Montreal. I don't even know if this store probably still exists. I don't know. Anyway, so this is a brand new copy. This is a replacement of that one. Le Arte Mar... Le Arti Oh my God, Le Arti Magiche. And it's uh, The Secrets of Secrets, uh, Supreme Magic, Amulets, Talismans, um, Potions, Formulas, Recipes, Divination, and Charms. So, it's this. I guess I could have showed you my original copies, but they're they're really um, they're really old. And I was gonna show you. I was I, I, I went to to take one of them, like the this book that I have, the original, um, which is no longer has a cover, and um, the the pages just came apart. <laughs> um, so yeah, no. And I'll try to remember Ernesto, uh, Ernesto Di Martino's Su de Magia, what it is in English. Unless you're watching and you know what it is, could you pop it in the comments? Otherwise, I'll try to remember to put it in the description box. Do I recommend these books? Uh, you're wanting to practice Italian folk magic? Yes. Um, you need this one. This is like very much... This is... Um, Yeah, if you, you know what, if you if you if you read Italian and you want something like this, uh, why not? I, I do I do recommend this one. I think it's I think it's interesting to read books um, in in different languages if you're capable, like capable. If you know if you if you speak other languages, if you read other languages, I think it um, there's always you get something more from it, or you you could get something new from it. Do I recommend Sibolique? Well, she's no longer in print. Uh, this is freaking enterta entertaining, though. So, so yeah, I recommend. Do I recommend any of these crazy books that you find at a secondhand bookstore? Yeah. You know what? Because I'm going to tell you right now. Do I recommend the books from the 90s? Yeah, I do. Because without the books from the 90s, those Wicca books, or, or those like um, Wicca slash witchcraft, where they weren't quite, you know, I recommend all the books. I recommend you read whatever catches your eye that um, will keep you engaged. Uh, if it makes you excited about the craft, I say read it. Read all the books. Get your hands on everything. Now, the only thing I'm going to say is that there's a lot available today. And... If you have friends that have similar interests and whatever, and you can like, you know, share books and stuff like that, anything you could get at a library, at a public library, anything you could get online that's in the public domain, anything that you can get um, secondhand at a, at a used bookstore, secondhand bookstore. Uh, what I'm trying to say is like, don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you spend 
a shit ton of money buying books. What I'm trying to say is that if something interests you, read it. Read all of it. Make up your own mind. I think I can already, just recently in the video, I said I, said I was tired of, of hearing uh, people um, rag on the books of the 90s. Well, we owe a debt of gratitude to those authors. Uh, if it wasn't for those books, we wouldn't have Amazon today full of every, every freaking witchcraft book uh, you can imagine. So... I'm just saying. If it wasn't for those books in the 90s, we wouldn't have metaphysical shops. Read all the books. Make up your own mind. That's really important. Don't, um, don't listen to some talking head like me on the internet telling you, oh, this, read this, not that. This is, this is the true information. This is not the true information. Read everything. But not only witchcraft books. There's books that are adjacent, that are witchcraft adjacent, I call them, or whatever. Um, if you if you're if you're you're if you're interested in plants, read books on botany. Learn like learn the science learn learn the science of plants and herbs and botany or whatever. Find find what read the books that help you get involved and actually do gardening and then in, and in actual gardening you end up interacting with plant spirits and earth spirits um what else did i want to say about that because I'm, I'm starting to like get a little this is going to be a lot i thought it's going to be a short bit. i looked at the questions i said eh, i could do this in like 20 minutes and done it's 26 minutes i'm not even halfway oh no i'm halfway all right Um, if you have, I don't, everything I do is part, it, everything I do is magic. Everything, everything I do has magic in it. I cook, there's magic. I, you know, I crochet or knit, there's magic. Everything I create is, has magic in it. I don't know how to not magic. I... I'm always magicking. <laughs> that's, not even, is that, that's not even a word. I, I made that up. Um, I, you know, when I did wound care, there was magic in my wound care. Whether I wanted it or not, it wasn't intentional. It's just that I am always, um, magic is, you know, I am always making magic or I'm always um, doing magic. Okay, that went on a tangent. I don't even know what. I think that I think I gl I glanced at a at a book uh, at a book. I glanced at a question and realized I hadn't um, made that statement. <sighs> How has your practice or paradigm changed over the years, if at all? It has changed many many times it grows it is um if your practice doesn't change and evolve as you change well hopefully you're changing and evolving and growing and all that stuff um you change your mind about things you you see things differently you experience things that then change your view of the world of life how has my practice changed over the years? I'll give an example. Um, my practice started out very external. Everyone's practice, I imagine, starts out very external. Um, oh no, I lie. My practice started out very internal because I started with the creative visualization. It was in the 90s when I first uh, went to a metaphysical shop. Um, See, there were the metaphysical bookstores, which were just books. And then one day in the mid-90s, I entered a metaphysical store, a metaphysical shop, a witchy shop. And there was the incense, the candles, the powders, the oils. It was an explosion for the senses. 
it was amazing and that at that point my practice became very external external meaning um tools candles powders oils um spells um you know what i mean right the actual using the tools of the trade so to speak over time depending on what's going on in my life my practice becomes more internal sometimes it's sometimes it you know at times it has been very external with altars and working altar and a shrine and and so on and so forth and uh saint statues on a shelf and um when i'm doing saint magic work and all that stuff um at other times my practice goes internal it goes within i put all the tchotchkes away i i cleared see back there my working altar cleared it right off i put everything away and right now i'm in a very um internal kind of practice now my practice is always internal but i do go i do ebb and flow with the whole external representation of my internal uh life my internal world so my inner world externally represented it represented it represented to my internal my inner world my inner world I don't know. That makes sense. That's all I got. All right. Um, sometimes, oh, and you know, sometimes I venture out and I try something new and be, and it doesn't work for me and then I don't. For uh, Sometimes things are in style and I don't understand. Like you know, with the internet, we know what's in style. Imagine, right? If someone had told me when I first started with this that I would be able to see what's in style in in witchcraft practice i wouldn't understand what that meant but um there's a there's a few years that all i hear is the spell jars all i hear about is spell jars yeah no for me spell jars i i use them rarely and they're they're not for spells what I'm trying to say is I don't do a spell jar for creativity and a spell jar for, for love and a spell jar for abundance. That's wasteful and it's cluttered. It's not for me. Um, and also, what are you going to do with those jars after? Are you going to empty them out? Like, Whereas, you know, if I do any kind of um, container work, is what I'm going to call it, or vessel work, it's serious shit and that's that stuff is not on display that stuff is uh, you know for protection and for binding and that kind of stuff all right and for deflection and all, all that good stuff okay next what does your reg what does your daily or regular practice look like and what do you do on a regular basis okay so i'm magic is part of everything that i do but that's a cop out for this question so i'm going to be brutally honest I do not have a daily practice. I never in my life did I have the luxury of time to have a daily practice. Um, n but also I've never had a need for a daily practice. Now, that's probably, and like, you know, I don't have to do the disclaimers, do I, people? Like, you know, are, you, are your feelings going to be hurt because you have a daily practice and I'm telling you that uh, I don't have one? Then, 
And that's on you because I don't know what you do. You right now are watching me. I don't have a daily practice. I don't have a daily practice um, that looks anything like um, magical work. I have certain I have certain rituals that I do that are just part of um, my daily life. I have a I have um, quite a quite a commute to work, and part part one thing that I do do every day is. I pay attention to the wildlife. I'm very fortunate to live somewhere where I'm driving down a mountain highway. On one side is a mountain. On the other side of the road is the lake. And right now with the way we, we were, we've had a lot of snow, which is uh, not usual for us because it's actually quite mild here for Canada. Those of you who don't live in Canada think that it's all the Arctic. Uh, no, uh, I wish, um, but it's not. And I, as part of my commute to work, I pay attention to the wildlife because I see a lot of wildlife on my drive. And, and I get messages from the wildlife that I see. And it's just, since I, I can't be out in nature doing stuff, I'm at least driving through nature, and it's almost like nature puts on a show for me, and, it, and, and I take in the information from what I see, and um, when I arrive to work, I feel at peace, I feel calm, because I, you know, I had my moment driving through wildlife, like driving and um, taking in the scenery, beautiful scenery and the wildlife. Cooking is something that I do almost every day. Uh, not as much as, okay, almost every day, a few times a week. I wish I could cook every day because that was part of my um, daily practice. Um, Again, that's informed by the Italian folk magic where food is central to my culture and magic is is practiced in the kitchen uh, with the preparation of food. So, And you know what? When, I'm, when I have some extra time, I do like to light some candles, light some incense, um, and you know and meditate um but that's not daily or just sit just sit with my spirits and you know in gratitude whatever like that kind of stuff but that's i can't say that's daily people mm -mm. i wish it was but it's not but i also don't feel the need for it to be daily Are there aspects of your craft that you need to keep secret? In your opinion, is secrecy important in witchcraft? Yes, definitely. Um, are there aspects of my craft that I keep secret? Yeah, I keep secret what I actually do. Um, uh, my magic is secret. Um, my spirit court is secret. I don't, I don't discuss who the spirits are in my spirit court. I don't discuss... Um, and secrecy is definitely important. People, people are still going to jail. People are still being incarcerated and tortured and killed um, for this kind of practice. Okay, so I don't take this lightly. So yeah. Also, um, especially when it comes to. Um, what I do and with whom? Uh, yeah, that's secret. It's got to be. It's um, if. But you know, OK, this I'm going to let it go a little bit, though, right? It's because in my culture, there's it's really it, it's, it's a crazy duality. OK. Uh, in, Ital in you know Italian immigrant culture, and I'm going to be specific about Italian immigrant immigrant culture because when I'm speaking 
And um, there's people who are watching me from Italy who are native Italians and stuff like that. And they like are, are thinking, oh my, no, we're not like that at all. No, because the people who immigrated, they pretty much are a snapshot of their culture at the time they left their country. And then they went and settled somewhere else and mingled with other people. So, so Italian immigrant culture is different than native Italian culture. So people that are still in Italy, not native as an indigenous. All right. Um, so the folk magic aspect, blab all over town. It's, it's, you know, it's commonly known, we're very open, come on in, whatever. The witchcraft aspect, the stregoneria aspect, no one's talking about um, that stuff openly because fewer people are practicing that than the folk magic. And the people practicing the stregoneria, well, you know... Uh, May or may, you know, stregoneria is sorcery. It's, um, it's, uh, folk magic, stregoneria, all these things, they were born from a place of necessity, uh, survival, okay? All folk magic, doesn't matter where it's from, what culture it is, is the magic of the people. That's why it's called folk magic from the German, folk, okay? And um, it was born of necessity. It was born of um, when they had nowhere else to turn. They turned to their spirits and, and they turned to their, you know, spirits. Yeah, that was like neither here nor there what i'm trying to say is that folk magic is the is the magic of the people and italians we, we're very open about sharing everything but the sorcery aspect is um more secretive for obvious reasons a lot of it had to do with defense and protection uh defense protecting but also retaliation cursing and that kind of stuff okay what are some of your favorite tools that you use regularly? See, me, I love my divination tools. For years on here, I've been talking about tarot and cards in general, right? So I love my... I don't even have any cards to show you. I think I have some cards here. Um, I love my divination tools. Um, in Italian folk magic, we use divination to see what's happening. We use divination to see what can be done. We use divination to see if our magic took. We use divination to see, uh, you know what I mean? Like what what people are planning, um, what's gonna happen. Um, and if we don't like what's gonna happen, how can we fix it? How can we change it? Um, so that's, this is, uh, Someone who loves me sent me this, and thank you very much. It's the original Rider weight that I can actually shuffle. Okay, I'm not going to get on that, but lately, people, the shuffling is an issue. Um, I'm not really big on tools. I don't use a lot of tools. I don't share a lot of what I use. I can tell you that I do use candles. Um, candles, incense, a lot of that, um, the candles and incense, I use the incense, um, you know, like the church kind of incense for Italian folk magic, kind of like, you know, saint magic kind of situations. Whereas, uh, then I, I have like all that in all that nineties, um, eighties and nineties, uh, witchy store kind of, um, flavor to my magic. So I love my candles and my incense and it's a thing, right? Um, I don't use, um, many tools. Um, I have scissors, um, 
that are specifically for magical work and sewing because um, I'm the kind of practitioner that um, my tools, I don't have tools that are just for magic except um, sometimes I do because um, sewing is, I do sewing for magical work um, like cooking um, I have a pot that I use um, also for magical work but I will share with you one thing this this was my father's uh, he gave this to me uh, around the time just before he was diagnosed with brain cancer or he probably knew and he hadn't told me yet um, and this is um, this is an evil eye this is this knife is a tool to remove evil eye and to um, it's basically it's a hex breaking knife um, and I can't I can't show you the blade I'm sorry <laughs> I know I was, I was about to say oh yeah we're open about everything yet yeah, no this is part of sorcery and I can't show you I can't show you the blade but this this was my father's hex breaking knife and it's used to um, to cut malocchio. It's used to break hexes, and um, yeah. I said I was gonna share, and then whatever. I'm sorry, but this is this is as far as this is as much as I could show you. I'm sorry. What books or resources would you recommend to newbie witches interested in your kind of craft? Yeah, I recommend my book. Um, I don't have it here to show you, so I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna go get it. Hang on. All right, I'm back. So I recommend my book, Italian Folk Magic, but I also and, and of course I'm biased, right? But you know it gives you an idea of of the the magic that my my parents' generation and my grandparents' generation and my great grandparents practiced. Um, but I also recommend. All the books that show up as recommended when you look up my book on Amazon or anywhere else, right? Read all the books. Read any book that, you know, if you're interested in folk magic, read a book. Read all the books on folk magic. There's the, I had one, I have one on Kindle. It's the one that um, Namqua recommends. Folk Witchcraft by Horn. Yeah, that one. Um, read all the books. Um, read the books on North American uh, North American folk magic, if that's what you're interested in. Or why not? Just read it. Doesn't matter. America is a melting pot, and when people when people tell me, "Oh, well, folk magic is a is a closed tradition and all this stuff," no, Italian folk magic is not a closed tradition. Um, even the sorcery is not a close tradition. It's just that it's like, you know, it's a little sketchy. You don't want to be talking to people. You don't want to be talking openly about, you know, Italian sorcery. Um, but there's some of it in my book. It's in my book. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's there. It's like any other sorcery, right? Like, you have, you know, the cursing and all that other stuff. The re re cursing, revenge, and all that stuff. Um, read the books on all, all read, read all the books I, I'm sorry but you know what I know I keep repeating myself but I'm tired of I've been on the internet since since the 90s talking about this subject and I hate I hate the I hate the gatekeeping um, I hate the um, I think I think I even heard I think I even heard someone overtly say on the internet in a video or something at a time folk magic is a closed practice shut the fuck shut the fuck up it's not <laughs> shut the fuck up i don't even know who you are i just made that up no um shut the front door uh it's not a closed practice um i don't know what to tell you guys i don't know what to tell you but oh my god whoever it was that i heard say that i I don't remember who they are, or else I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have, you know, burst out like that. You know, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had that outburst. 
So if you're one of the people that said it, I'm sorry, but it's not a closed practice. And if you're saying so, it's because you had some really bad leadership. You had a bad mentor. That's all I can tell you. I almost made it to the end of the video, people, without saying something like fucked up. But here we are. All right. <laughs> It's not a close practice. All right. Uh, I just don't want to show you my stuff because it's personal and I, I feel a little exposed. But otherwise, it's uh, it's not a close practice. Um, that's it. I'm going to stop now because I think I'm just getting a little punchy and now I'm just talking nonsense. Like I said, you, could, you know, I recommend my book if you're interested in Italian folk magic. And I recommend all the books on folk magic if you're interested in folk magic because you need to read everything you need to form your own opinions before you listen to other people's opinions and that's the thing right you need to have at least a basis a foundation of how you feel and what you think before you start watching uh, people on YouTube telling you what it is and also be the you know, how, you know practice discernment practice discernment if someone you know if you're watching someone who is really young and they're telling you that this is the way this is remember we were all that that we were all that young when we thought that this is the way it is right it's like i knew freaking everything when i was 20. so fucking expert a genius I knew everything there was to know about everything. There was nothing out there I didn't know about because I was 20 years old. I knew it all. Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, 30 something years later, and I don't know shit. Well, I do. I have experience now. I know enough to know that I don't know everything. And so whatever whatever magical practice you're interested in whatever floats your boat whatever draw you know whatever makes your heart sing makes your makes your skin buzz whatever it is makes your hair stand on end and is like really exciting to you um read all the books but then roll up your sleeves and do it do magic try it out make massive fuck ups that's how you learn um don't just don't just sit in your easy chair reading book after book after book after book and like you know well, armchair occultist or armchair you know magician okay maybe maybe that's what maybe that's as far as you want to go but if you you know you got to push yourself a little bit if you're if you're the if you're the type who likes groups who likes to work with a group again practice discernment groups they turn toxic really quick man and just be able to say this is for me or this is not for me. And I know some of you may may, may be cringing because I said groups turn toxic pretty quick. Yeah, there's always some kind of fuck up that you know, or that that wants to like power trip and whatever. And it happens in any group, not just in a magical group or in a coven or whatever. Practice discernment. You have to feel strong within yourself. You have to know who you are enough. You may not be an expert witch. You may not be an expert, an expert um, magical practitioner. But you have to at least practice discernment for, are these my kind of people or are these not my kind of people? And then look for other kinds of people. Look for another group. If you're, if you're more of a solitary person, practice on your own. But you know what? It's kind of nice to also... Um, have friends, magical friends, who are also solitary practitioners, so that you can exchange notes with. That's kind of cool too. So I think uh, I've said enough, and uh, maybe even a little too much, and I'm going to leave you with this. So, one more time, just, just to beat the dead horse, read everything make up your own mind make you know have your own convictions and your own beliefs before you listen to what other people have to say 
you'll get the most out of it that way and you won't lose yourself you won't lose yourself you might just find yourself all right thank you so much for spending all this time with me today i really appreciate you all and wherever you are in the world i'm wishing you a beautiful day bye-bye